Every year, more people are heading into the backcountry. And every year, more people are getting into trouble. The wild, untamed nature of the mountains that appeals to us can also turn on us, and a day of fun can become nasty, especially in the backcountry. If you get into trouble out here, you have to be found before you can be helped. Okay, just gonna go back into stages. First stage, down. Up Search and rescue in the mountains is dangerous. The terrain is rugged, the weather unpredictable, and avalanche hazard is always a threat. These people risk their lives for strangers often foolish strangers who go into the backcountry thinking that if they get lost, the rescue team will save them because it's their job. What many people don't realize is that for the most part, mountain search and rescue teams are made up of volunteers. This is their story. It's a story of unlikely heroes who save lives while risking their own. Ski Patrol is responsible for safety and first aid within ski area boundaries. Many of the skills they use on the job are the same as those needed in search and rescue. At Whistler and Blackcomb Mountains in British Columbia, the Pro Patrol is one of the most experienced in North America. In the 70s, as more people began to explore the backcountry, the patrollers realized they needed a search and rescue team and set about organizing and training volunteers. The Pro Patrol is still the core of the local search and rescue organization, but when they go outside the area boundary, they go as volunteers. Like most jobs, much of their work is routine, but when they go up the mountain in the morning, they have to be ready for anything. A lot of people come up to me and say, wow, what a great job you got. It's just super up here. I'm really envious. Um, there is a really good positive part to the job. There's also the part of dealing with trauma and uh, with people lost in the backcountry. We get, although the tide is changing, we do get a lot of people who are not as experienced or not prepared to be in the backcountry. And it happens maybe a dozen times a year where they go off the backside of the mountain through our Walmart boundary and end up down in one of the drainages and they spend usually a very chilly night and then we have to call in search and rescue or ourselves and it's a very time consuming process and uh, you know, they, it's, it's uh, quite interesting to be involved with those, with those searches. The backcountry around here, it's totally open. Once you leave the backcountry, you're on your own and you're allowed to access the backcountry, whereas some spots in the States and in the Banff area, you're not allowed to access the, the out of bounds. So we want to keep that access totally open. So we'll try and inform people going out there the best we can as to what the conditions are and try and encourage them to be uh, well equipped for what they might encounter out there. You know, they should have rescue gear, should have a bit of knowledge, and they should at least know the terrain. But uh, these days we're getting a lot of people out there now that really aren't very well equipped and are just maybe following tracks or following someone who's been out there once before and so this area is known as the cake hole uh, it's uh, off the south side uh, of the peak of Worcester Mountain and it drops down to the, towards the Chequemus River's drainage uh, we get a lot of people during the course of a year who ski across their area boundary and go down and get some really good skiing for the first hundred feet. And uh, most of these people know that there's no way of getting out um, from there without get going for a big slog through the trees and then uh, and taking about a 10 kilometer uh, logging road out to the highway. So they turn around and walk back up. Uh, the people who don't know that end up dropping in and uh, keep on going. Uh, if they don't figure out that it's probably better to walk back up, 
they end up down in the valley, and uh, we've had stories where, where people end up uh, trying to cross the Chequemus River to uh, some sort of hopeful road on the other side, which uh, just gets them wet, and uh, they end up having real epics down there. The weather as it's going right now is, is really typical for, for this area. Um, being up in the mountains, it, it can be clear and for a few minutes and then it could cloud in or clag in just as it has with this uh, fog. And uh, somebody could see some great snow down below the area boundary, decide to ski into it and then end up uh, down a few hundred feet, uh, fogged in, totally disoriented and not really knowing where they are. From that point, their, their epic can start and they can end up going down uh, uh, down to the river or they can try hiking back up, but they're, after they've lost their orientation, it's, uh, it's kind of difficult for them. The weather had changed in minutes, from high overcast to foggy and almost zero visibility. In the mountains, this is known as a whiteout. The fog and the snow become one and you can't read the terrain. It's like skiing blind. These are the conditions when people can get into trouble, especially if they don't know the area. One wrong step and you can easily find yourself at the bottom of a steep cliff or gully that you can't get out of. I think the main thing to do for trying to find a, uh, do things right in, in the backcountry is just to be really aware of what's going on uh, with the snow and also know your limitations and your your ambitions and uh, and understand all how those three points interact. There's always of course the, the chance that uh, something will go wrong and all your possibilities that, uh, have been exhausted. In that case, well, the shit's just hitting the fan and you got to deal with it and it's not fun but uh, it kind of is in a sense and, and we all have to make our calls to how much risk we want to take and why we go out there. But uh, you gotta do what you have to.